Hey everyone, in this video we'll be seeing how you can use React Router version 6 for client-side routing in your React applications. Now React Router just had a major version upgrade and they moved from version 5 to version 6 and in that process they deprecated a few of the APIs that they had there before. So if you plan on upgrading the version of React Router for your React application, you might have to make a few changes here and there. Even a lot of my students faced the same problem where they were following some tutorial which was working on version 5 but that code did not work for version 6. So in this video we'll quickly go over how you can do basic routing using version 6 and I personally feel that the version 6 is much easier to use and more intuitive. So let's get straight into it. So here we are on VS Code where we have just started a new React application. And as a first step let's go ahead and install the latest version of React Router DOM. So in the command line, I'll say npm install react router DOM. And if you see in the log, we are done installing version 6.2. And talking about the current code that's present in our React application, we have a very basic component named app, which is just rendering the message welcome to your React app. And we are considering this as a main component. And hence in our index.js, we are saying react dom.render our main app component in our document object in place of the element with id root. And this element with id root is present inside the index.html file. And hence with just these three files, we are able to render this app component into our index.html in place of this particular div. Now let's begin integrating our react application with react router dom. The first thing that we need to do is to import the browser router function from react router dom. This function is used to connect our app to the browser's URL, which will enable us to read the address URL in our browsers. And then we will wrap our main app component with browser out of. So we'll create an opening and closing tag and render our application within it. So we're done integrating our react application with the router. Next up in our main app component, let's try to create a few links to certain URL routes. And for that, we'll be importing something called link from React Router DOM. So here we'll start by creating a new nav tag. And then we'll add the link to two new components that we'll be creating called about and contacts. So I'll open the tag for link. It will take one attribute called two. And here I need to provide the route name, which will be about. And then I'll give the name to the hyperlink. Let's create another link. And here I want to create a link to the route contacts. So we have added two links to our main app component. Let's see how our application looks as of now. Also, let's go ahead and add some styling to our nav element so that we can see some separation between the two links. But the important thing is when I click on one of these links, just notice that in the address bar, the URL changes. So when I click on about, the route changes to about. And when I click on contacts, you can see the URL route changing again. Now next up, what we actually want to implement is that when we click on one of these links, it should take us to the respective component that we'll be creating for about and contacts. So next up, let's create two new components. And for that, I've created a new directory under source called routes, where I've created two new JavaScript files. Let's go ahead and add our components here. So under about.js, I'll create a new React component and this component will contain a simple material UI card. So I'll add the code for that. I've added all the imports necessary for adding a material UI card and then the actual code to render a basic card. Similarly for contacts, we'll create a new React functional component and here we'll return a simple list. So our two new components are ready. Now what we actually want our app to do is to navigate to these components when we click on those router links. And for that, we'll have to go to our index.js and change a few things here. First of all, we'll have to import routes and route from React Router DOM. Now routes is just a container for all the route elements that we'll be creating using this particular route. And this route element just declares what component should be rendered at a certain URL path. Now things will become more clear when we actually implement the logic here. So next up, we'll import our newly created components. I'll import about from routes. And then similarly, we'll import contacts. Now here inside a browser router tags, we'll add the new routes container. And within this container, we'll define all of our URL paths and their respective components. 
So main root component is app and to render that on the home page of the application, we will create a new route where the path is the home page or the root path and the element that needs to render here will be our app component. Similarly for our other two components, we'll add more routes and we'll add their respective paths. So let's save all of our changes and let's see how things look like in our development server. So our homepage still looks the same, but if we click on any of these links, it will take us to their respective components. So on clicking the about link, we are being taken to our about component that we created. And similarly, when we click on contacts, we are seeing our contacts component, which has this an order list containing the contact details. And all of this became possible by using the link component and the route component together. So what the link component does is change the URL in the address bar. And then this route definition here is telling which component to render when the URL changes. So if you notice the root URL is rendering the app component, the about URL route is rendering the about component, and then the contacts URL route is rendering the contacts component. Here in our development server, if we give the root route, we are taken to our app component. If we give our contacts route, we are taken to the contacts component. And if you remember the same behavior was being achieved by using the switch component from react router version five. Now, if you notice, whenever we click on any of these links, the main app component disappears. But if you want to share the same layout for the app component throughout all of your other components, that behavior is now baked in into react router and to achieve that particular behavior, we'll use nested routes. So here in our index.js, what we'll do is for a root route component, we'll move the other two routes inside the opening and closing tags. So something like this. Now your other two routes are inside the root route. And what this will do is make the app component common for even the other two routes. There's one more little chain that will be needed in your main app component, which is that we'll have to import a new component called outlet. And what outlet does is it renders the child's routes element if there are any. So in our current case, there are two child routes within the main root route about and contacts. And we'll place these components right below our nav and then we'll render our outlet component. This is it. Let's save our changes and see what our current behavior is. So in our root route, only the app component is getting rendered. But when we click on about, you'll notice that in place of the outlet component, the contents of the about component are coming in. And similarly, when you click on contacts, it will be replaced by the contacts component. So in this video, we just saw how you can use links to change the URL address and then how you can use the combination of the routes container and the route element to define your navigational behavior. And also at the end, we saw how you can create your nested routes and keep the contents of a component common for the children routes by the help of outlet. So in this video, we went over all the basics that we needed to work with React Router. In the future, we'll be creating more videos regarding more advanced features available in version five. So subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for future content. If this video helped you, click on the like button and let me know in the comments what kind of content you'll want to see in the future. This was it for the video and I'll see you guys in the next one.